The Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and your local cable provider presents Cable Reports. Join us now as Cable Reports brings you up to date on current issues facing the Commonwealth through discussions with your local legislators and other policymakers from across Virginia. From the basement of the General Assembly and the City of Richmond, welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. We're so pleased to have Scott Miller, Miller president of Virginia Wesleyan College, here with us today. Welcome. Mr. President, Thank you, how are you? Delighted to be with you. Good, good. So you're here today in the basement of the General Assembly. I assume you're meeting with some of the uh, members of the General Assembly today. That that we are. We're we're trying to get out and make our case to the state legislature about the importance of TAG grants to the students of Virginia. Talk to us about TAG grants. Those are tuition assistance grants? Tuition assistance grants to students that are attending not-for-profit private institutions around the state. And it... Um, uh, you know, with the, for the time being, uh, every student from Virginia, uh, independent of need, can get uh, thirty-two dollars or $3,300 uh, for to use at any of the private institutions in the Commonwealth. It's really quite a significant program, and it's a cost efficiency for the Commonwealth. Tell us a little bit about your college's history, its origins, uh, student body, faculty. Sure. Virginia Wesleyan's been a well-kept secret in the Virginia Beach, Norfolk area, and and um, we, we trace our origins back to the late 1950s, early 1960s, when the Virginia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church was meeting in Ashland. And the decision was made that the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area was growing and that there was need for a United Methodist affiliated institution there. And so 1961, the charter was granted. 1966, the first class is opened at a beautiful location right now where um, uh, Route 13 and Interstate 64 intersect, and uh, uh, the Norfolk and Virginia Beach communities have uh, grown up around us, but we've developed into the premier uh, residential liberal arts college in the coastal Virginia area. I understand it's quite an enterprise these days to, to, to run an institution of that size. As a matter of fact, I think you analogized it at one time as being mayor of a small city. That, that it is. Um, the, you know, the college president is pulled in many different directions, and, and these days uh, uh, you devote a good bit of time to your state legislature, to private donors, and to marketing the brand of the institution. In my 26 years as a college president, I've never seen uh, competition as intense for students as it has been these days. Tell us a little bit about your student body, how diverse it is, the numbers. Sure. Um, we have, uh, in a typical year, about 1,500 students that enroll at Virginia Wesleyan. We have a growth plan that will grow the school by a significant amount over the next three to five years. But 72% um, of our students come from Virginia. Uh, we are represented with uh, 23 states and 10 foreign countries. Uh, we're our primary service area, in addition to Virginia, is the mid-Atlantic states and on up into New England. But we're the very traditional residential liberal arts college. We think that there's a value in not just being educated for that first job, but for the job after that and for the rest of your life. And so students who come to Virginia Wesleyan are looking for intimate classes. Uh, we have a faculty to student ratio of one faculty member for every 13 students. One to 13. So it's an, wow. it's an interaction that's valuable that carries a lifetime experience. Uh, the liberal arts experience, we, we emphasize that learning occurs in the classroom and outside the classroom. So um, there are 168 hours in a week. Typical student will spend 42 to 50 hours sleeping, 18 hours in class, and it's up to us as uh, a higher educational institution to partner with that student on learning that occurs for those remaining 100 hours. And it can be internships, it can be research, it can be service learning, it can be Greek life, it can be intercollegiate athletics. All of those things provide a more well-rounded education that you don't get at larger institutions or state schools. What kinds of internships and service learnings uh, do, do the students have available? Well, I'm, I'm fortunate uh, to be located right where Virginia Beach and Norfolk come together. 
And uh, within 45 minutes of our campus, there's a wide array of in internship opportunities um, that, that are unmatched anywhere. Um, it's, it's so impressive. Our sciences are very strong. Uh, students interested in marine biology can have a relationship with the Virginia Aquarium and Marine mm -hmm. Science Center. Uh, we actually have a research vessel there that major universities rent from us to use to conduct uh, research. If you're interested in, in the arts, the Chrysler Museum of Art, we offer some classes through the art studio at the Chrysler Museum. Um, there is also major industry in the area, so anything that a student's looking to go into, I like to think that our campus isn't just that 300 acres at the Norfolk, Virginia Beach border, but it's far beyond that. It's the whole Hampton Roads community. And um, we're, we're a part of a group that's called the Virginia Tidewater Consortium. Mm -hmm. And it's a group of schools that if we don't have the programs on our campus or there's something interesting, unique at another institution that's a participant in the consortium, students at no additional charge can take a class that's rather unique in a foreign language that isn't offered mm -hmm. at a small school at, say, William and Mary. Um, that's the uniqueness of being located in the Hampton Roads community and it's the extended campus that adds a value to a Virginia Wesleyan experience. Now you, were, you, you mentioned that students represent some 23 states and 10 uh, right. countries uh, across the world. What about demographics uh, in terms of the, the student body? Well, um, we a rather diverse campus population. Um, Forty percent of the students are represented are an underrepresented population. Mm -hmm. Twenty-three percent African American. We think that learning occurs when students are studying, living, socializing, competing in an environment that's extremely diverse. And so, diversity is extremely important at a traditional residential liberal arts college. So, what kind of degrees do you offer? Well, our, our biggest degree right now is, is biology. The sciences are very strong and we have a direct early enrollment uh, program with Eastern Virginia Medical School in eight different areas that allow students who excel in the sciences to go to Eastern Virginia Medical School on an early admission program and pursue medicine and seven other types of degrees. We're extremely strong in uh, business and psychology and um, recreation and leisure, um, but the, the core of the educational experience at Virginia Wesleyan is in the traditional liberal arts. And so every student is expected to write well, to have strong analytical abilities, and to be able to communicate effectively by the time they graduate. Now I understand you're working on some online programs as well. Yeah, we were just given approval by our creditors to expand in the upcoming year to include an online division which we think will serve uh, the Hampton Roads community and beyond. We have a big military population yes. in our area and online classes are attractive to them because they can't always just block out time in a specific seat time format. So we'll be doing degree completion at the undergraduate level. We'll be doing stack on programs with community colleges in the area. And then uh, an online Master of Business Administration degree that um, we think will be attractive to our graduates and, and beyond because we have good name recognition. Now what about your faculty? I understand it's a, 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 a really good faculty. Extremely talented faculty, among the most talented faculty that I've seen on a college campus in all my years in higher education. And, and um, you know, one reason that um, we have a couple of very exciting projects coming up in the coming year is because we have an extremely talented faculty. Um, we will be opening this summer uh, the new Greer Environmental Sciences Center, which um, an anonymous donor has provided the funding for a 40,000 square foot facility that will touch on all areas of academics at our institution, but studies, students who are interested in environmental science can come and study in a facility that's second to none. Major university, public, private, you name it, it is a first class facility. Tied to that, uh, Jane Batten, um, a noted philanthropist in, in the Hampton Roads community has um, funded the Batten Honors College on our campus that will open in the fall of 2017. And our first cohort of Batten Fellows will enroll this fall. These students, um, we started with 30,000 potential names for 20 students who will uh, be on full academic scholarships 
and who will be enrolled in special programs associated with the Baton Honors College. So we think that because we have this big, new, beautiful environmental sciences center, every student, no matter what the major, will have environmental studies as a part of their studies in the Baton Honors College. Every student will have a funded international experience associated with it. And then because of um, the Batons relationship and the formulation of the Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy at the University of Virginia, we're going to have a leadership development component as well. So environment, leadership, global, um, a, a graduate of the Batten Honors College of Virginia Wesleyan will be ready to go out into uh, their, their home communities and make a difference as leaders. And we're really excited because when fully operational after four years, there will be 80 total students, 20 in each class, mm -hmm. that will be on Batten Fellowships. There will be another 80 to 100 students that will receive Schumadine Scholars. And these are students with similar academic profiles, the 1,300 and up on the SAT and the 3.7. 1,300 1,300 on the SAT and 3.7 and higher grade point averages. So we're going to be recruiting the cream of the crop to Virginia Beach and we want to give them a world-class education and turn them back into society to really make a difference in, in the lives of, of America and beyond. Now, you mentioned how uh, your college is a well-kept secret. I take it that part of your mission today is to educate uh, as many people as you can about your college. Yeah, one of the things that I found attractive when I came to Virginia Wesleyan two years ago is that um, I, I am a product of residential liberal arts colleges. I'm a lifelong United Methodist. I was excited in looking at the institution and I find it compelling to get out and share the good word of what we're doing with the adjacent communities. And uh, Virginia Wesleyan is an outstanding academic institution. We just need to tell more people about it. And uh, the growth into graduate education, the Master of Arts in Education, the Master of Business Administration, the online division, the formulation of the Baton Honors College are things that are going to take us beyond the boundaries of the Commonwealth of Virginia. They're going to give us more of a regional and a national reputation. Um, you know, one other thing that's interesting, we like to think that a school like Virginia Wesleyan is providing cradle to grave mm -hmm. uh, education, preparing people for a lifetime. Uh, we have a new affiliation with the Tidewater Community Academy and they'll be moving offices uh, to our campus for the upcoming year. And in partnership with Tidewater Community Academy, we'll be starting an early enrollment program so that academically talented students from the Hampton Roads community will be able to come as juniors and seniors. And if they're truly exceptional, they can study full-time with us get a diploma from Tidewater Community Academy and have early admission to Virginia Wesleyan or other fine institutions around the Commonwealth. So it's an exciting time to be at Virginia Wesleyan. It really is. And I understand that uh, Delegate Margaret Ransone attended Virginia Wesleyan and I think Senator Richard Stewart is, is a graduate yes, of Virginia we're, Wesleyan. Yes, we're, we're, we're pleased. They, they both uh, did attend Virginia Wesleyan, had wonderful visits with them uh, this morning. We're also delighted as I went around and visited with some of the other delegates to see interns of Virginia Wesleyan uh, here as a part of uh, their learning experience and also a number of people who graduated that are supporting the, the General Assembly in various uh, related employment roles as well. Can you paint a picture of, for us of, of, of your facility there? Sure, we're a 300-acre campus and the, the interesting story going back to 1959-60-61 is that um, it was a cornfield mm -hmm. and there was very little around it and it was sort of the midpoint between Norfolk and Virginia Beach and the the plan was the United Methodist Church was looking for a location where over a period of years they could build a world-class institution and um, we're 39 buildings we're now uh, we're located right smack on the Norfolk Virginia Beach line our mailing address is Norfolk but 292 of our 300 acres are located in Virginia Beach so we reap the benefits of being part of both cities Norfolk International Airport is right across the the street walking distance uh, there's a new 90 store outlet mall that's going in at the at the end of the road okay. should be attractive to college students looking for internships jobs and even a social venue um, as a result of the growth that's coming 
to our community that's surrounding the campus. Uh, we're looking to develop land across from the campus to have a, a, a residential complex that perhaps would support our upper level students, graduate students, international students, and even faculty and staff that want to live near the campus. So uh, coming up in 2017, 2018, uh, there will be a new apartment style complex, a gated community that will be built right across the street from the campus. Uh, talk to us about Greer Field. Our Birdsong Field. Birdsong. Birdsong Field. Greer is the Environmental Greer's Sciences environmental Center. Environmental Science Center. Right. Birdsong Field, the, the Birdsong family, uh, traces its involvement with uh, Virginia Wesleyan back to its founding in 1961 when Harvard Birdsong of Birdsong Peanuts in Suffolk was on the first board of trustees and over time there have been a number of members of the Birdsong family that have served on our board of trustees including George Birdsong the current CEO of Birdsong Peanuts and Mr. Birdsong in looking at um, He's a graduate of Washington and Lee. He has had a number of family members that have attended Randolph-Macon College. He said, you need a first-class, multi-purpose, intercollegiate and recreational outdoor athletic facility. And so um, what the Birdsong family and some other friends have funded is a beautiful synthetic turf complex with lights and a, and a pavilion and supporting amenities that not only serve our intercollegiate athletic program, but also our intramural program as well. So often you hear about students out having fun at night. I love leaving campus 10, 11, midnight, and uh, seeing the lights on at Birdsong Field and, and uh, students out playing intramural football or mm -hmm. lacrosse or some type of a recreational activity. Now you have a very robust athletic program. Talk to us about it. That please. we do. We have 22 intercollegiate sports. 23, will, 23 and 24 will be coming in the upcoming year. Um, we have just added swimming uh, for men and women as intercollegiate sports because of the popularity of that in our area and because we have a beautiful aquatic center that's being used by area clubs. But um, we have a very strong intercollegiate program. Our women's program was recognized a year ago as one of the uh, premier programs in the nation, Division Three, for not just its level of competitiveness but for the atmosphere for women in sports. What I'm particularly proud of, though, is that we're winning and we're winning with outstanding students. That's what the Division Three experience is about. Dave Macedo, our men's basketball coach of 17 years, is the third winningest active coach NCAA Division Three in the country. Really? And wow. year after year after year, he produces basketball teams that have competed in the uh, Elite Eight and the Sweet 16. In 2006, we won the national championship. 2007, we were runners-up. Um, Dave wins games, but he does it with good people as well. And as a Division III president, I can appreciate all the scandals that I hear in college right. sports. I'm fortunate to have people who are, uh, who are coaching at the Division III level because they're molding the character of future leaders and not just in it to fulfill a career ambition. I'm sure you get uh, a lot of questions about tuition. Uh, talk to us about uh, what tuition is sure. and, and what's available to students in order to... Uh, and, and that's one reason why I'm here talking to the General Assembly about the TAG grants because they are important. I encourage families and students to not just look at the sticker price of an institution but to look at it from the value proposition as well. And there are a couple different ways that you look at value. Currently, um, the length of time that it takes to get a degree at public institutions is over five years and growing. At a private school like Virginia Wesleyan, students generally are completing their degrees in four to four and a quarter years. That additional time mm -hmm. in class translates into dollars. And so many people look at our sticker price and they say higher education, private schools in particular, are so expensive. But Virginia Wesleyan has an endowment of $52 million, and we devote the earnings from that endowment to attracting some of the top students in our region. We have an extremely attractive financial aid program. 98% um, of our students receive institutionally funded financial aid. So what that translates into, using data provided by the Commonwealth, you find that a typical student at Virginia Wesleyan will pay $24,000 a year a typical student attending a state school in Virginia is about $2,500 less than that. We like to think that that $2,500 difference is a, uh, you, you can see the value added that you get from being in a small college 
environment. The other thing with uh, the media these days talking about debt, you hear stories on the news of students with sure. 100 to 125 thousand dollars of of student debt. Those stories are quite unusual. They make for great news media bites. Um, I think that's really about two percent of the kids in America. One study that I heard that really are in that category. A graduate of Virginia Wesleyan comes out with between twenty-seven and twenty-eight thousand dollars of debt. You can buy a uh, Toyota Camry yes. with all of the yes. amenities in it for that much and it starts depreciating by the time you drive off the lot. A student in turn for that investment can, depending on which study you look at, earn their earnings over their career can be a million to two million dollars higher as a result of that college education. So, um, you know, a typical student paying twenty four thousand, there are several means of financial aid. We have an outstanding work program. Three hundred of our students work jobs on campus while uh, while pursuing their education. We're trying to to make that higher education affordable to them. Now, what kind of other support do you pr provide students? For example, if they're having difficulty in class, is there counseling available for them? Yeah, and that's an added a value added of coming to a to a private college, an outstanding learning center. A mentoring program. We have a unique program for our 300 intercollegiate athletic athletes, um, where each of our sports have two faculty, two full-time faculty members that serve as mentors for those programs. Um, this is something that we saw in the New England Small College Conference, where the the elite institutions up in New England fostered this model many years ago. But we take two faculty members, assign them to a sport. Um, usually they volunteer, they're not necessarily mm -hmm. assigned, and they follow the academic progress of the students on those teams. Um, and by following the academic progress, if a student's struggling in an area, they find somebody who can help them. We don't want the students to fall through the cracks. When we recruit a student to Virginia Wesleyan, we're not looking at um, being one of those schools that says, look to the left, look to the right, because only one of you will be standing yes. in four years. We're wanting every student that we admit to be successful. And that's what a small college experience at a place like Virginia Wesleyan is all about. So I take it your, your graduation rate is, is really, really it, high. It, it, it's very good. It's never as good as you want it to right, be. A college right. president always wants to, to tackle that area and make it a, a, a top priority. But um, we're, we're pleased at the direction that we're going with that. Um, on the cost issue, again, we, we are also formulating um, arrangements with some of the community colleges in the area to assist students that are aspiring to get a degree from Virginia Wesleyan but perhaps need to attend a community college mm -hmm. first um, for affordability reasons and new guaranteed enrollment arrangements with Tidewater Community College and Thomas Nelson Col Community College enable students who are local to go there and to take a prescribed sure. curriculum the first two years and enroll right away as juniors um, with full applica applicability of the hours that they've taken. Do you have a typical student, if you will? I mean, I know they're from all over the country, and, but is, is, well, there, is there a typical student definition? So I, I don't know that there's a typical student because we want a diverse student population. Right. We think that learning occurs better when students are around people that are different from themselves. We want people that are hungry to learn we, we um, you know, I, I'm asked often by parents, how do you know when there's the right college? I think when a student comes to a campus and they walk around and they get a feel for the people that they're around and they visit the classrooms and the dormitories and the cafeteria and the athletic teams and they, they, they develop a comfort level with that. I think that's the biggest recruiting tool that a college or university can have. You know, naturally, we aspire to um, academically talented students. Um, we want students that are hungry for an education, students that are hungry to make a difference in the world. That's what a Virginia Wesleyan experience is all about. We think that every student who enrolls should um, have an internship, should have a study abroad opportunity, should have an ability to do research, and should take advantage of learning activities that are outside the classroom. And I believe the uh, Princeton Review recognized uh, your college as one of the best liberal art colleges in the nation sure. and also one that uh, was environmentally friendly. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're in a terrific location 
for to address some of the environmental issues. You know, you get into the Hampton Roads community, a hot issue right now is sea level rising. Exactly. And as a result of this new, absolutely fabulous environmental sciences center that we'll be opening uh, this summer and fall, um, we have the ability to develop a regional and even national niche of um, bringing in students interested in one of our 33 majors every student should have an opportunity to experience something in environmental education so no matter what walk of life they go to whether they're in business teacher education psychology biology chemistry or the like that they'll go back into their communities with an environmental emphasis and and you know on top of that the global experience that we want them to see sure. we want them to take that worldwide as well now you've been uh, pursuing this vocation for over a quarter of a century now now what what different challenges do you face now than, than you did when you first started? Oh, the college presidency has changed too, so much over the 26 years that I've, I've uh, been a college president. I think the Internet changed the way we... Uh, uh, delivery system and uh, marketing trends changed with the founding of the Internet. Um, but, uh, you know, online institutions are not going to put us out of business. Online institutions are going to make us do our job more efficiently and better. But um, nobody can replace the learning environment of a residential liberal arts college. Students are not going to give up their desire to come to a school like Virginia Wesleyan to compete in intercollegiate athletics, to live in a residence hall where they're with students different from themselves, where they can take part in intercollegiate athletics, Greek life, service learning. You can't get those things in online programs. And that's what makes our niche in the market even more special. So we've got about 30 seconds left, but I want to give you an opportunity to uh, give us some closing remarks, convince our audience why they should send uh, their, their children to well, your institution. Uh, uh, thank you, Woody. I appreciate being here today. And I, I will say that higher education in the Commonwealth of Virginia is the envy of American higher education, whether it's our community college system, our state institutions, or our private institutions. Virginia higher education is exciting. And, um, you know, I came to Virginia Wesleyan because it, ha it is a well-kept secret. It's a wonderful academic institution in a terrific location, and the location affords opportunities to students that you just don't get anywhere else as a result of the Virginia Great. Beach Great. Well, community. thank you for being here, President Scott Miller. Good thank to see you, Woody. You. Thank you for watching this special edition of Cable Reports. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans.